This is the story of Harps for Hearts. My name is Lisa Lynn. I'm a Celtic harpist and a composer. I write music on a lot of different instruments. I grew up playing the guitar and I started very young doing that and stayed in love with music for my entire life. And as I got a little bit older, I became a professional bass player. And I loved playing in hard rock bands and heavy metal bands. And I made my living for many, many years playing in the classic rock dance band. And in doing this, I saved up enough money to attend Musicians Institute of Technology in Hollywood. Uh, but I still loved playing all my acoustic instruments and playing at Renaissance fairs, and it was really doing that that I discovered the Celtic harp, which I fell completely in love with. You can also call this style of harp a folk harp, a lever harp, or an Irish harp. Harps were known to be in existence 4000 BC in Persia, derived from a hunter's bow and arrow, some believe. King David was also associated with the harp. However, at that time, it would have been the lyre, like the shape is here. Around the 8th century, the harp took the shape that we know it to be today, and there's a harp from the 15th or 16th century in existence in a museum in Dublin. In the 17th century, the pedal harp was developed, and many people became familiar with that from harp Harpo Marks. So I started making recordings, making records, and I got signed with Wyndham Hill Record Label. I got to tour around playing festivals and concerts. the Columbine tragedy and I heard that one of the families was using one of my recordings called Love and Peace to soothe their high school student who was critically wounded and paralyzed there at the hospital. I was so blown away by this I took my harp to that hospital in Colorado and met with the family, had an incredible experience and decided to get Anne Marie Hawkhalter a harp of her own and we were able to present it to her as a gift from many harpists and the harp makers in hopes that this would be something that would encourage her and make her feel like sitting up in order to do this. I visited her a few times and got her started learning some basic techniques, just hoping that this would be something that she would feel good about doing during this process. I was so inspired by this that I took all my harps, I got as many harps as I could and I started taking them around starting with my grandmother's rest home, doing concerts and teaching people how to play the harp. I sent out a bunch of letters to various hospitals and um, rehabilitation centers wanting to share this idea. City of Hope responded right away and they loved the idea. They're one of the biggest cancer hospitals in California. So we invented a program that had several components. One was lobby concerts where in the evenings we'd have professional musicians, my colleagues and friends and people touring through town doing very special concerts of all different kinds of music from around the world and patients and families were invited to come down enjoy the concerts. We even did some some variety shows with magic and such. We had hands-on harps workshops and that's where I brought all the harps and invited people to come down and hear a little concert and then learn something on the harp themselves. The harp is so beginner friendly that it was always a truly amazing and empowering experience. We have music in the halls where I would also just sit in the hallway and just put out some really beautiful, soothing, soft music. Finally, I got some helpers and we ended up being able to spread out a little bit more and do a little bit more with that. We also played music by the bedside, and if a patient wanted to hear some music live in the room, we could do that. Um, sometimes um, they were just resting, sometimes there would be more uh, interaction with them too, and sometimes they would feel like and want to play a little harp themselves, and that was always really wonderful. I'd also visit patient rooms who wanted personal lessons, and I would just go in there and play harps with various people, and of course the babies and uh, the, the infant areas uh, was always welcome addition. And Children's Hospital, this was in Gainesville, Florida, Shan's Hospital, and this little girl really wanted to play. <laughs> she couldn't get me off the harp fast enough, and eventually she did. Meanwhile, I was very behind on writing and putting out a new record, so I used the time in the hallways to write songs for patients that I met 
there and I just put it out there I didn't do the same kind of promotion that I used to do before but because this program was so unique uh, it started getting a lot of attention from the various newspapers and uh, patients and doctors learning the harps together was something new that never happened and so it was getting a lot of attention this new program that was going on lullabies to romantic ballads never underestimate underestimate the power of music especially when it comes to help people express their feelings even cope with illness joining us now is harpist and composer lisa lynn the first musician in residence at the city of hope national cancer center in duarte lisa Cheryl, our next guest went from being a heavy metal musician to a new new age Celtic harp player. The transition may seem random, but Lisa Lynn says she found her heart through the harp, and she's helping others to find inspiration and well-being through music at the internationally renowned City of Hope National Cancer Center outside of Los Angeles. The talented Lisa Lynn brings her uplifting sounds to Good Day Now. Lisa, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. So nice to have my you stop by. Now, the top ten of the Billboard charts was elusive to me, but because of all this attention on the actual harps program my record went to number six on the billboard new age chart and on retail sales in new york it was between metallica and 50 cent and if you are familiar with those groups you'll know how surreal that is so what i'm doing now is i take this slideshow and I take my harps around to different hospitals and I explain how it works that you can have music in your programs and then I have the staff uh, come and play the harps. We've expanded to put music in several Kaiser hospitals now uh, across the LA and Southern California area. I take my harps to schools and school kids learn to play and they learn tunes that they know and write their own music. Sometimes I just do a little program where they learn all about the harps. When I play at outdoor festivals, I always encourage kids to come up and touch and play the harp and see what it feels like. And uh, various learning centers, I bring the harps and I'm sort of on a pilgrimage to sh empower people because I believe the harp is a symbol and of all the things that you can do and people dealing with uh, challenges. These are a bunch of nuns <laughs> that wanted to learn the harps as well. I take it also to different festivals and expose people to playing because I do believe the harp is a symbol and the harp represents something that you didn't know you could do. So what else can you do that you didn't realize that you can do? lobby that we can do bigger events and more music and uh, we've been fortunate enough to receive some grants and some funding and City of Hope has helped make all this happen to keep the music program going now over 10 years. It's just been an incredible experience for everybody who's been involved. Um, now what I do is I go to speaking events, I get invited to share about the program and show my slideshow and hopefully inspire other places to do similar. Anne Marie, the student from Columbine, is an inspiration. She's come so far, graduated from college, she mentors youth in her church, she has forgiveness for everything and she's an incredible sh shining light. She's the reason for this whole program. So it just shows that from a tragedy can be seeds of new beginnings. <laughs> 